Well, it's May the 1st. Why don't we tour the garden? Well, nothing much has changed in the garden since the last tour that I did, which was eh, two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, middle of April. Uh, spring is such a time of growth that, you know, things do grow lushly and vigorous. I mean, look at this garden. It's incredible. But uh, if you've watched my last garden tour, this one's pretty much the same. I'll just give you an update on some things. All right, let's start our garden tour in the herb garden. I've got my bullseye toothache plant. They are putting on some blossoms there, and that's encouraging. I've got my safflower about to blossom. Now look at this. All these little things in here. I thought they were insect eggs, but I, I discovered the culprit. It was a caterpillar, and that's caterpillar poop. And there's probably more in here, but I'll need to come out at night with a UV light. Let's see if I can find them in there. That's a lot of poop. <laughs> Surely that's not one caterpillar's worth. So, yeah, big green guy. Looks like a tomato hornworm. Borage, it's about to blossom. I can't wait for that. All the potted plants are doing well in the patio. Got a lot of purslane in here. This is a superfood, so I'm just going to leave it there. That fig tree won't be bothered by that. Herbs are looking nice. They've responded well to the rain. Need a little nitrogen in the basil. Need a little nitrogen over here. But for the most part, they're looking good. There's another little blossom there. Bullseye toothache plant. This has different foliage than the other toothache plant that I grew last year. Very interesting. Fig deck, full of life. Not much difference here. Got a lot of little figlets coming on. You can see some fruit coming on in here. That's encouraging. I thought all my fig trees had died in the freeze, but nope. Almost all of them survived, and that is very encouraging. Here in my herb garden, well, if I ever needed some sweet marjoram, I've got tons of it now. Spreading out really well. Sage is doing great. Yeah, everything looks good over here. This is Mizuna, very delicious Asian green, and it's starting to block out my rosemary over here. So I need to use that and eat that. Nice in a stir fry. I don't even know what this is. I think that's, I think that's oregano. Oh, looky there. Some sort of brassica from last year. That would be bok choy. What are you? Ah, oregano, purple oregano. Nice. Sweet potato slips coming on strong. Look at that. Gonna have lots of sweet potatoes this year. These are all from last year's sweet potato tubers that were too small to eat, so I saved them and put them in the soil. And look at that, wow. That's nice. This is a peach tree, but that's rootstock. This uh, peach tree is coming up from the rootstock. The actual graft died in the freeze, but that rootstock, I'm gonna let it grow and graft on another peach to it. So, that's good. Grapevine here, this is a muscadine that I saved. I'm gonna have to do something with it. I think it's going to my son's house, but uh, yeah, it's kind of furry and hairy. It's gonna need to be pruned up. Here's my uh, tomatoes that are suckers. If you remember in my one of my latest videos, I planted this sucker in this soil just to demonstrate that it can be done, and it's taking. This is another one that took. Yeah, spare tomatoes. You can see we've had some rain. I'm surprised the sun is out. Muscadines. Muscadines are coming on. And look at all the fruit we're going to get this year. When you prune these muscadines back every single year, according to the Ison's method, you get tons and tons of fruit. I'm very excited about this one. This is one of my most prolific plants. It's a bronze type plant. Uh, the grape is a bronze type grape. And uh, yeah, man, I love these muscadines. Aren't they beautiful? All throughout my garden, I've plugged in these onions. These are Asian bunching onions. And it's time to start harvesting and drying these and putting them away. Uh, they're good in stir fry. They're good in any time you need a green onion. Those are good. My perilla, a Korean green, has gone to seed. It's bolted. I don't know if it's any good after it bolts. I don't know much about it, but yeah, it's looking kind of ragged. But over here, I've got an eggplant doing well. It's got some blossoms on it. Look at that. 
eggplant blooms are very beautiful. Got a couple dwarf tomatoes over here doing well, and my spearmint and rue are growing together just fine. Yeah, the garden's looking great. I had a problem with leaf, um, not leaf miners, uh, vine borers. You can see there's some squash plants, squash fruits down there that did not get pollinated. But uh, yeah, the vine borers showed up in force. So I'll get a harvest off of these and plants will probably give in to the vine borers. But got peppers putting on blossoms. That's a volunteer tomato right next to a pepper plant. I have no clue what kind of tomato that is. But we'll find out together. All my pepper plants are starting to put on blossoms now. That's encouraging. The uh, uh, extra tomatoes are still here. They will move to another location soon and be grown up and bear lots of fruit. So, yeah, tomatoes, man, they're so easy to grow and I always grow too many of them. I see a cucumber beetle flying around, don't I? This is damage from cucumber beetles. They puncture the flesh of the plant and you can see that it scars the plant. Um, the thing about cucumber beetles is though they're beautiful, they spread diseases. And so I have treated these with pyrethrin, which is an organic insecticide derived from the chrys chrysanthemum, I believe. But uh, yeah, it's rained a lot now. I'm going to have to treat again. In fact, it's raining right now. Wow, the tomato bed is doing awesome. I have never seen tomatoes grow this well in my garden. It's just absolutely incredible how many tomatoes I've got coming in. I mean, truss after truss after truss of tomatoes. Tons of them. These Edox tomatoes, these are a hybrid. I've never seen a tomato so very densely green like this. This is almost a blue color. They are so healthy. I have had no problems with them whatsoever. Some of the other varieties are putting on some fruit. You can see down in there. But uh, they're a little shorter. These Edox are growing like crazy. They're almost up to the string here. And I have not anticipated this problem, but I can't drop and lean my plants yet because I've still got fruit down there and I need that vine to be bare in order to lean it over. So I don't know what I'm going to do here. I am completely happy with this method of trellising and training a single vine up this string. But, yeah, I don't know if I had enough height to effectively do this method the right way. We'll see. It's a good problem to have, huh? I have an elderberry bush here, I'm doing great. This thing uh, survived the freeze just fine. Got some peppers there and a citrus tree. Everybody's looking happy in their little pot. Over here, my cucumbers are starting to get big, putting on some blossoms. That's the first blossoms I've seen. I'm gonna have to prune and train these because, well, while some of them are climbing the net, I need them all to climb the net in a single vine. So I'm going to have to come out and prune these guys up and I might do a video to show you how I do it. I've already got a video, but you know, it never hurts to do another one. Bush beans are looking healthy. Man, all these plants have loved the rain. They're putting on blossoms there. Onions right next to them, about ready to harvest and take them in and put them in the dehydrator and dry those onions up so I can have onions, green onions, all the, all the rest of the year. Check out these beans. As Johnny Cash would say, look at them beans. We're going to have lots of green beans. Got plenty of blossoms coming on. You can see that. These are incredible. Now, I thought that I might have to thin between these beans, but I think they're doing okay. I don't see any disease. No problems yet. Got a little yellowing down at the bottom, but that's, that's to be expected where those leaves get, uh, you know, shaded out. But that's a healthy bean patch, man. That's awesome. I plan on canning some of these beans this year. I've got a pressure canner. I've got a, I, I can do regular canning. I do pressure canning. Um, so we put some beans by this year. My determinate tomatoes are doing fine. They're putting on some fruit and some blossoms. So I'm gonna put some bird netting over here so that those big fat tomatoes there do not attract the local mockingbirds. And believe me, they will. As soon as you leave them out here and they start to get red, those mockingbirds will be all over those tomatoes. There's Lucy. Lucy's coming back from above the graft union. So this is all true Meyer lemon right here. That's encouraging. So three or four years, we'll start getting Meyer lemons again. It's a good rootstock down in there. Survived the freeze. But uh, yeah, kind of a sad story, but at least she's coming back. My apple trees are doing really well. 
they're about a foot tall now and it's almost time to take the graft tape off of the rootstock here. This uh, cleft graft, I think it's a cleft graft. I don't know what kind of graft it is. That graft is taken, it should be taken, uh, and it should be healthy now, should be able to take that tape off this month. South Anna butternut squash in the pumpkin pit. Man, that's a healthy stalk, isn't it? Look at that. Beautiful. These are vining plants. They'll spread out over this area. And that is encouraging. Over here, we've got our goji berry doing well. We've got an old, gnarled veteran pepper plant pushing out new growth. That's encouraging, too. I think it's a jalapeno, but I don't remember. But it's two years old. Another apple tree, that's kind of a backup apple tree, doing great. It's about 18 inches tall, wow, that's incredible. My uh, Hugo culture bed is not doing that great in terms of these blackberries. I've got a healthy one here, I've got a dead one here, and I've got one that's struggling here. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. The flowers are doing all right, they haven't grown very big, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Again, this is an experiment in Hugo culture. Most of what's from about my finger down is wood bunch of logs and sticks and leftovers of Lucy the lemon. We'll see how that goes. Here's another pumpkin pit, except this one has melons in it. This is a watermelon plant and we've got lots of vines coming up. We're going to have to thin them down and select the ones we want to grow and see if we can get some watermelon this year. I love how watermelon looks. Isn't that beautiful? That's nice. Trees, man. Gotta have some fruit trees. This is my uh, plum tree. And it is responding well to its pruning, broke out of dormancy, and is growing well. So we're, we're growing these fruit trees small, keeping them uh, manageable size, growing them in the goblet form. And so, so far so good. Got another pumpkin pit over here. I planted some Seminole pumpkins here. Thank you, Lauren, for the Seminole pumpkin seeds. Uh, they have not come up yet, but they've only been in the ground a couple of days. Pumpkin pits, man, is a way to grow some pumpkins. Get you a nice pumpkin patch, melon patch with just a single hole. Down in the bottom of that hole, there's some real vile compost, nasty stuff down in there. And uh, yeah, you can grow a whole bed of pumpkins, a whole patch with just a, a single hole. Peach tree. I thought it died. It was a little slow to come back from the freeze, but yeah, it's coming back very slowly. We'll probably have to delay that pruning a year start working on shaping it next year but let's see what it does and see what grows and be glad we got a peach tree good dog good dog that's a good dog she's a good dog one of the things I like to do is plant flowers like this and like this in the holes of my uh, cinder blocks and the hope is these will be pollinator attractors and bring in the bees and the bugs that pollinate my vegetables. So they're coming in, they're looking nice. Get some blossoms and blooms. Makes the place look nice, huh? Now this right here is a trial. This is a Kogigu pumpkin that I harvested last year and I wanted to see if the seeds are viable. Well, now that I have some sprouts up, <clears throat> You think I should plant these somewhere? I'm almost out of room. I guess I could plant them where they grew last year. That was around the front yard on the side of my house. Yeah, might do that. Hey, Phoebe. I showed you in a previous video how to take a fig tree and divide it down at the roots. When a fig tree gives you these, uh, these, this growth down at the base, you can usually pull some of this out with some roots. And here's the results. We got us a brand new little fig tree. Now, this one did not take. I don't know what happened, but apparently it did not have enough root system. But yeah, I guess that's how it goes, you know. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But this one's working. I got me a whole new little ruby fig tree. And yeah, I'll show you where I succeed, and I'll show you where I fail. Check out my fig tree. This is my Celeste fig tree. And this tree is 16 years old. I keep this tree small and I prune it back every year to maintain that 
kind of that uh, that open center and look at that tree we're gonna have lots of figs this year got some figs forming already on the new growth there and this tree will be loaded this is actually my favorite fig tree I have tried all kinds of figs but I always come back to the Celeste the Celeste seems to be my favorite that's the garden in May looking good huh I'm very excited I am very excited those tomatoes make me so happy they're almost all the way up to the trellis it's incredible well there we have our May the first garden tour thank you for joining me on black gumbo southern gardening please subscribe to our channel and share our videos if you find them useful we'll talk to you next time bye bye